This tutorial will provide an overview of the counting, sorting, and sizing options in ImagePro Premiere 9.1 and higher. We will start on the Count and Size tab. The Count and Size tab will correspond to the Count Size ribbon, which will have many groups ranging from left to right in order of workflow. We can start with either an Auto Bright or Auto Dark selection. By choosing Auto Bright, our Threshold tool will appear on the right-hand side. You'll notice that we automatically select the brightest objects in the histogram. This will correspond to the start and end points, which are numerically listed below. If you'd like to change these, you can simply type on the keyboard or use the spin buttons to change these values. This will set the range for the thresholding, which will correspond to the color you see here on the histogram, as well as on the image. This is a quick and easy way for you to select the objects from the histogram and see live updates. If you'd like to make any adjustments to your auto bright, as you notice, when I change my histogram, automatically the segmentation selection will switch to manual. If I choose auto dark, as expected, the dark objects in the image will be selected, simply selecting the inverse on the histogram. In this particular case, we'll use manual. We'll select the thresholding in our histogram, and there's two different ways we can do this. One is clicking in the middle of our selection, which you'll see a double black arrow, where we move the range without actually changing the endpoints. The other way is to actually change the selection of our range with the double white arrow on the ends. Now once I put my selection over the correct intensities, it's important to note that the range that I am selecting is based upon a range of intensities. Zero is dark, 255 in an 8-bit image is white. So by selecting the ranges on the right hand side, I'm selecting the brightest objects. For different bit depth images, this range will change. If at any point in time I want to toggle my display on and off, the show button at the top is very useful. By simply clicking the show button, I can see what is underlying my selection. Additionally, if I don't like the color that I see, and it doesn't correspond easily to my colors on my image, I can change using the color palette. After I've segmented the objects in my image, the next step is to count. By going back to the ribbon, I'll choose my count button. My count button will redraw all of my overlays on my image, will provide a data table at the bottom of my workspace, and will create an annotation on each one of my objects with a measurement. All the options that you see here can be changed. First of all, I can always move my data table if I don't like the placement. As you'll see in other videos, it's very easy to move my dialogues around by simply clicking on the top and dragging them off into a new location. By rearranging my desktop, now I can actually see all of the values, and I notice that it creates an entry in each additional row for all of my objects. All of the columns that are presented for each one of my objects are created from the Types menu. By going to the Types menu, I see that I have all of the values on the left-hand side. This is all of my types, and this may be more types than I actually need. For this reason, there's a drop-down available where I can filter down on only the types of measurements I will be making. In this particular case, I won't be drawing lines or best fits, but only looking at regions. So I'll select Region. I'm given both my object and region measurement groups. Just to start from a clean slate, I'll clear all the measurements on the right-hand side. I'll choose my class name, click the Add button, move it across to the selected measurements. I'll choose my area, I'll choose Aspect Ratio, Caliper Mean, and down at the bottom, I'll look for some intensity measurements. Here's an intensity mean. There are many powerful measurements that you can find in our available list. Perimeter, radius, roundness, the width and height of specific objects, and a very handy measurement, the percent area. 
We'll choose all of these measurements and have them as our selected measurements. But also note that each of our measurements we choose can be used as a filter as well. Simply by clicking the X or clicking off of this dialog, my measurement data table will update. A few things to note about the measurement data table when in count size is I can click in the data table and highlight not only the entire row but also the object in the image. If when doing this I'd like to display all the information about my object in a quick preview, we have a nice view called the object window that can be displayed on the right hand side and can display all the measurements relating to that object as well as a quick preview of the object itself. By clicking on the image, in the data table, or by scrolling through the object window, I can move through each of my objects. Now, if I want to look in my data table at all of my objects that are the largest, I can choose from my area column and by simply clicking at the top of the column I can sort all of my objects up or down and see the measurements associated with each individual object. I can also look at the statistics of all of these objects. This is located at the top of the measurement data table. By clicking this button a new dialog appears at the bottom and I can see for each of my columns all of the measurement data displayed with statistics per this image. Now we have a little bit too much data here so we're going to try to filter out some of it. Let's pin our data table to the side. What I want to do is use my count size tab to its fullest. So I want to include some measurement filters as well as go through some of my options. First I want to remove all of the objects that are touching the edges. By doing this I'll go to my options. And you'll see in my options that I can make many different changes. The top portion is all appearance options. I can change the font of my measurements. I can change the size here as well. I can change what is displayed on each of my objects such as nothing, just a name, measurement, or both the name and measurement. I can display where it will be located on the image and the number of decimal places displayed on the image as well. This decimal places will also correspond to my measurement data table. I can choose whether my outlines are filled or they're just outlines. In this case I have filled checked. By unchecking it you'll see that I'll just display a small outline around each of my objects. Sometimes this is very valuable to be able to see what's inside of my object. If the width needs to be increased I can simply increase it here. I also have counting options and by default will reset the data every time you run a count. If you'd like to preserve the count data you can do so here which will mean every time the count button is hit you will be able to append that data to the data table. In our segmentation options we'll see that we have many options relating to the objects in our image. One that's very important is our clean borders option. Right now none of the borders are being considered. However, we can choose any of our four borders or all of them which means any object touching a border will be removed from the count. With that option chosen, we'll click the count button to display only the objects that are not touching the edge. Maybe in this case it's easier to see that if we have filled on. We also have a fill holes option which can be very useful if inside of each object there are areas that do not correctly threshold. In this case, anything inside of your outline that does not correspond to the rest of the intensities in the object will be included in the area measurement. Other options that are new to version 9.1 are those such as the bias option, which can also be changed to a range max or a standard deviation. This bias can be introduced when doing the auto bright or auto dark function. The auto bright or auto dark can be biased in one direction or another, and that can be changed here. You can also grow both positively and negatively all of your objects that have been counted. If for instance you know that all of the objects should be a few pixels larger than what you're thresholding on, you can simply under threshold and then grow by a few pixels. Lastly, if you want to load or save these options, this is the place to go. Segmentation options can be very useful and should be saved with as many experiments as possible. If you need to reset all these options, that option is available too. 
Lastly, our auto thresholding tool has many different options. The default is the Image Pro Plus version. However, you can also choose Mean, Mode, Median, Max, Best Fit. This determines where the auto threshold will fall. Right now we're displaying it with the Image Pro Plus model, but it's worth exploring all the other options to see if they work for you better. Now that we've explored all of our options, we'll close this dialog and we'll investigate the edit range. Edit range will allow me to select only the measurements that I deem important for this count. All of the measurements that I chose in my types dropdown will also be displayed in this dropdown. Area, aspect ratio, caliper mean, intensity mean, and percent area are all now available for me to use as a measurement range as well. If I want to remove all the objects that are small, and this is definitely recommended for many objects in an image, I can move the minimum up to a value that I desire. I get instant feedback on the image as to which objects fall into this category. I can create complicated selection of ranges for all of the measurements that I chose to eliminate objects that do not fall into the category of object that I want to count. My aspect ratio measurement will give me a different range of values along the horizontal axis compared to my area. In this case, zero denotes the roundest object, where an aspect ratio of height versus width is identical. I can also choose to include intensity in my range calculation. This will mean all of the darkest objects or brightest objects can also be excluded in this case, I'll exclude all the objects that are darker than 206.2. Now, in order for me to apply this, I can simply hit Apply Filter in OK, or check the Apply on Close and click OK. Now I have selected only the objects in my image that I want to count. These objects have fallen into two categories, those that fall within the ranges I've selected, and secondly, those that are not touching the edge of my image. I can now display all these objects in my data table, which I have pinned against the left-hand side, and view the statistics on the bottom. However, I can also look at all of these objects in my data histogram. The data histogram will display any of the types that I have selected and allow me to change the bins and select these objects as well. Let's now try a different example. In this color image, I can perform the exact same count size routine. By clicking on Manual, I'll open up my Threshold tool. And I can simply left-click in the histogram to select the data that I want. If the color doesn't work for my image, it's very easy to change. And once I've selected all the objects that I think are important, I would simply do as I did in my last image, and I would click Count. What's important to note here is when working with multiple images, the values that you set in your options and in your edit range will always be the same from image to image. The best place to look when moving from image to image is in the Results group. You'll notice that we have counted a total of 1,088 objects. Unfortunately, zero are in range. If we want to turn off range, we can simply click the range button to turn them off, recount, and notice that now we have 1,073 that are displaying on my image. The reason why some of them still are not displaying is because we also have our clean borders option on. So objects like this one will be removed from our count. To fix my ranges, I simply need to turn ranges on, choose my edit range option, and reset each of my individual measurements. Now, in this case, I may only want to measure in a certain area. It's always important to know that I can select a region of interest and count inside that region of interest. In my last example, I'll choose multiple ranges. By simply choosing a manual segmentation, choosing my first class as the lowest segmentation, and we'll call this dark, I notice that I can begin to populate a table with multiple classes. I'll click my plus button to create a second class, adjust this class segmentation, call this medium, 
and choose a third class, which I'll call Bright. Now I've created three different classes, Bright, Medium, and Dark, with their corresponding segmentations. If I wanted these segmentation to ever overlap, I have the option to do so with Allow Overlap. Right now, without this checked, there is no overlap allowed. If I didn't want to simply drag my selection, I could always use the eyedropper tool with a specific size of selection. 1x1, one 3x3, one, three three, or 7x7 seven seven gives me different selection sizes which picks either less or more pixels to sample from. By simply selecting my eyedropper, I get a tool that will display all of the intensities under my mouse. Now that we've selected our three classes, before we select count, we'll want to make sure that a lot of our options are set up correctly. Moving into our measurement options dialog, we'll turn off the clean borders option. We'll ensure that we have filled on so that it displays correctly, and we're not going to use any labels in this example. I also want to make sure that my ranges is turned off, which it is, and then I have all the types selected that I want. With all of my options selected correctly, I'll choose the count button. My measurement data table will now be populated with all the data that I need. Let me close my image strip and open my measurement data table. In order to display each of my classes in the best way possible, I'm going to be using this grouping option. You'll notice on the left hand side I have the color blue for all the objects that corresponded to the dark class. If I scroll down, we'll also notice that I have a second class called medium, which is green, and a last class, which is my bright options, also colored red. I can group all of these with my grouping option, which will display each of my classes in its own category. With the drop down selected and my totals displaying many of the different options I have available such as average, I can display for each one of my measurement categories the statistics per class. In this particular case I have my class name, area, aspect ratio, caliper mean, intensity, and a percent area. Since my percent area is displayed as a decimal place, I want to make sure that in my options I'm using more than a single decimal point. With this option selected, I can see that I have the percent area of each one of my classes. If you have any further questions about this or any other tools, please contact your media cybernetics reseller or local representative.